remember that time the entire Hawk Moth slash Shadow Moth slash Monarch slash Gabriel Aggressed arc was just ruined completely and utterly by the finale? Yes. I too remember that. And it keeps me up at night if I'm being perfectly honest. Seriously, when did this show first come out? Like 2015? So that's almost eight years of this show being out. Eight years since season one began. Kids have been born and started school and started watching this show during that time. Kids have gone through all their high school years and have become fully fledged adults during this time. We've seen the MCU hit its peak. We saw the Star Wars sequel trilogy release. We saw Game of Thrones and the rise of HBO shows as peak TV. We've seen streaming services, Trump as president of the USA, COVID. I mean, so much has happened in that eight years. And yet all the while, in the background of our lives, we've had these spandex-clad heroes fighting off the evil machinations of everybody's favorite smooth-brained villain, Gabriel Agrest. You know, largely due to the snail pace release schedule and the poor narrative pacing, it took five seasons, almost eight years, to get to the point of wrapping up the first big saga of the show. And would you look at that? It went down like a lead balloon. Damn. Imagine all that build-up, all that storytelling, all those years, all that money, and this is what was put to screen. Yeah! Whoops. Look, it's not the end of the world. It wasn't a Game of Thrones or Star Wars level finale where it was just the worst. But it also wasn't good by any means. It's the proverbial wet fart in a church. And as I say about Gabe quite often, they snatched defeat from the jaws of victory with this one. Because look, I think it's quite clear that the show was never perfect. Not perfect by any means. At times it had weak character development. It could be slow paced, especially in terms of its major arcs. It frequently sidelined one of the two most important characters in Cat Noir. It bungled a few different arcs, such as Chloe and everything that went on with that. And then sometimes the seasons just had a bunch of boring episodes. Not filler episodes, but just kind of dull ones. They didn't push forward any major storyline. And yet also, they didn't have a very exciting internal episode storyline either. They just felt like they were filling up the quota. And yet, despite these problems, the show remained very popular. And it still had a lot of bright spots that they were working up to. And I won't say that all of these plot points were spoiled by the finale, but a lot of the groundwork that was laid during the gay bark was just... Ugh, not just destroyed or ruined, but completely and utterly obliterated, eviscerated by this ending. And so in the end, I can't help but think that the Gabriel Agrest saga, as in the personal arc here, it was kind of ruined. Okay, since the beginning, there's one set of character relationships that really defines the whole Hawk Moth saga. And that's the relationships between the characters in the Agrest family. And here we're talking about Adrian, Emily, and Gabe. But I think we can also slot Natalie into this one as well. The interpersonal dynamics of these characters are really what sets much of the story into motion. Gabe and Emily love each other and they want a child. And so Gabe and Natalie go on a quest to try to find the Miraculouses to make this a reality. This eventually births Adrian, but curses Emily to an eventual death. Unable to cope with this, Gabe begins his villain spree, whilst also closing himself off from Adrian almost completely, with Natalie going along with this because of the love she feels for Gabe, and for Emily, and for Adrian, wanting him to have his mother back. But at the same time, she also indulges Adrian. She persuades Gabe to let him stay at school, which facilitates him becoming Cat Noir, and one half of our main heroic duo whom battle Hawk Moth. Early on in the story, we learn that Gabe is Hawk Moth and what his plans are, and from that point onwards, even though Marinette slash Ladybug is put forward as the show's main protagonist, it's clear that the emotional stakes are forever going to be skewed far more towards Adrian. His father is the big bad, and he wants to bring back his mum. That's a huge plot point, and one that's set to be massively dramatic and intriguing. Imagine the moment where Adrian, in the depths of Gabe's lair, discovers who Monarch really is and what he's trying to accomplish. And in my eyes, the further we go along in the show, the more likely it became that we'd have our own Luke Skywalker Darth Vader moment. We have a tease of that in Cat Blanc, but now we need round two. We need Adrian's redemption from that, where it shows that he's not going to fall again and become akumatized, that he won't fail, that he can be the hero, that he can win. Maybe you could even have your own Darth Vader saves Luke from the Emperor moment, where perhaps Cat Noir saves Ladybug from Monarch at the last second, despite knowing who Monarch is and what he wants to do. Could you imagine the drama there? The stakes? No matter how terrible the season was, I felt like there was no possible way to bungle the ending of the Gabe saga. Just no way. There's too much hype, too much emotion, too much history. You can't lose. It's the perfect setup, whatever you do. Or at least that's what I thought. Because what do you know? 
That's exactly what happens in the finale. After all that build-up with Adrian, after a full season of this massive plot point being that Adrian feels completely unable to stand up to his father, and thus feels like it's building to that point where he snaps and he does completely defy his father, discover his monarch, and then fight him. But no, he starts crying instead, he takes off the ring, and he sends it off with Plague, and then we don't see him again until the epilogue. Yes. I know, it feels like a joke. It feels like a terrible fan fiction written by somebody who hates Adrian. Because, yikes, this is his big moment. The ending of the Monarch arc. And it wasn't just shared with Marinette, which honestly would have been fine. And it's how I expected it to go down. She is a main character. The duo taking the fight to Gabe and her being there to support Adrian in these last moments. But instead of sharing this, the moment was completely given to her. With Adrian never even finding out that Gabe was Monarch to begin with. Like, what is that? Like, what is that? Man, oh, okay. I mean, this is if instead of Luke going to face Vader and the Emperor at the end of Return of the Jedi, it's Leia who goes instead. And I mean, yeah, there's still that connection. She's still Vader's daughter. Much like Marinette still has her own rivalry and beef with Gabe and a lot of emotional connection to this story, but it is not the same vibe. It's just not the same. What if Frodo couldn't keep going in the Lord of the Rings? And so Sam, who's been there the whole time and so has that connection still, has to go and chuck the ring in the volcano for him. You know what I mean? It's just not satisfying. And so for me, it really did feel like that it needed to be Adrian facing down Gabe at the end, or at the very least, being present. Present for the final battle. Being in the same city, maybe. Being in the same country, maybe. But nope, I know what I'll do, said Asterix. Let's yeet this kid into a prison cell across the English Channel and give all his story to his girlfriend instead. Ugh, oh, that's a yikes from me. Big time yikes. What even is this trash? And so instead of having this massive payoff to this arc that's been building throughout the franchise, with season after season of Gabe controlling Adrian's life, where he's allowed to go, and when, who he can see, what his study schedule is, forcing him to do modelling gig after modelling gig, while simultaneously neglecting him emotionally and treating him like shit. I mean, not even gonna share meals with your kid? That's ice cold. Guess he always wants to be ready in case there's an angsty teen he can torment with his butterflies. But yes, this happens. And then in the latest season, there's the hint that since Gabe knew he was running out of time, that he was going to enjoy his time with his son, building a sweeter, more trusting relationship out of pancakes. Only for Gabe to suddenly go full psycho, trying to force him to love Kagami, and doubling down on controlling his life for all time. So that's five seasons worth of angst, character development, and heartbreak that was all set to culminate with a final confrontation. Instead, they give all of that to the girlfriend character, turning what could have been an epic clash between father and son into a teenage girl standing up to her boyfriend's nasty dad because he's just utterly unable to do so himself. Cringe. And by transferring that ending to Marinette, it eviscerates the arc completely because, let's be honest, he wasn't her villain. I'm sorry, but he wasn't. And that final clash just didn't have any emotion. It was cool, as in the action was cool. But Adrian could have brought both. Could have had cool action and heaps of emotion behind the scene. Ugh, and it's just... I know there's no point crying over spilt milk, but this is like watching a five-tier birthday cake complete with candles get brought out to you, only for somebody to trip and it for a land onto the ground just as you arrive. The episode fails literally at the last moment. It's just such a waste. And look, I'm not a TV writer, but how hard would it have been to include Adrian in this finale? Here's an idea. Instead of him crying and sulking, have him do that, only for Plague to snap him out of it, and for him to bust out of prison. But by that point, Gabe has already left the complex to go and fight Marinette at the mansion. Meanwhile, let's make Ladybug a little less stupid and have her go to the mansion to confront Gabe. Not to try and find Adrian or whatever the hell she was doing. Oh, that was so dumb. Anyway, Adrian astrocats over to the mansion after getting pinged there by Marinette, maybe fighting some of those useless goons along the way, who knows? And then you can have him arrive during the fight in the kitchen. So he doesn't know that Marinette's Ladybug because she's transformed. And he doesn't know that Gabe is Monarch because he's transformed. And they all start to fight until Ladybug and Monarch both say each other's names. Adrian then panics. He can cataclysm the floor to try to get them to stop fighting. Obviously it doesn't work. We have the Emily reveal. And maybe he stops fighting. He stops helping Ladybug. Not because he's joining Gabe, but... You know, I feel like you'd have a right to go into shock in this moment. Just found his mum's corpse in the basement and realised his dad is a supervillain. Oh, and also his girlfriend is Ladybug, the person he's been pining after for ages. So, that's awkward. Maybe Ladybug then gets venomed, perhaps protecting Cat Noir. And that way, Asterix's fetish of having Cat Noir need saving all the time still gets to make it into the final cut. But this way, she still loses and it's not her fault. Now she's out of the way and Adrian can do his thing. Hell, 
If you really want to, you can imply that she was going to win until Adrian gets in the way. Adrian then snaps out of it, he takes the ladybug, he unifies them, he fights Gabe one on one, he beats him like Marinette does in the original, he then tries to convince Gabe to stop and does so by powering down and Gabe then panics and seeing his son in this moment would give him a more realistic change of heart because let's be real, when he fights Marinette, he goes pretty quickly from not caring about collateral damage at all to self-sacrificing. And so I think it makes a lot more sense that Adrian would power down to try to speak to his dad. And so I think it makes more sense that by seeing Adrian, it reminds him of what he's become and what he wants to be, and so he sacrifices himself. And I also think it makes a lot more sense that Adrian would power down to try to speak to his dad, as opposed to Marinette, who just kind of came across as an idiot for doing so. Like, why would you trust this man? Whereas Adrian, you can at least excuse that. It is his dad. Then Gabe does the Venom thing to Adrian, like in canon. Reveal yourself, Kwamis. And then he dies to save Emily and save Natalie, giving Adrian his family again. And then, my God, maybe have a scene with Adrian and his mum. Her waking up, perhaps. Them mourning Gabe together. Boss also acknowledging what he did was bad. You know, have a family moment. Wrap up the aggressed arc in a nice little bow. Have Marinette hug and kiss, whatever. Because, hey, there's an identity reveal in there too, which would be great, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that have been great? And then you can go on with Lila getting the Butterfly Miraculous to set up the next saga and doing that cringy Paris Utopia ending as well. Hell, I'd even accept the Gabe statue at this point, because it shows that even though he knows his dad was a villain, Adrian still loves him and mourns him. Kind of like Luke and Darth Vader, really, and I know I keep bringing that up, but my god. It's a good example. It adds a bit of bittersweet, even some resentment if you want. But yeah, ultimately, that part, you know, doesn't really matter, the ending. It's the final confrontation that matters most. People say that life is about the journey, and I agree it is. But that is not the same for a TV show. It doesn't matter how good your show is, if the ending sucks, it ruins everything. And for me, this ending very much ruined the whole aggressed saga. And I mean, the saga itself was already very up and down to begin with. But then it finishes like this and it's just, oh, what a waste of time. It's almost insulting you for having the audacity to actually watch the show for eight years to begin with. Sucked in, mate. And so, yeah, that's a shame. For me, it's just baffling how you could actually get this writing so wrong. Damn. So, yeah, there's really not much else to say now. Saga ended badly. Let's hope the movie and the Lila saga can get some redemption, but we'll see. Although both do seem pretty interesting, so let's remain cautiously optimistic for now. And so yeah, with all that being said, that's the end of the video, and I would like to say that these are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the ending of the Aggressed Saga? Do you agree with me? Was it trash? Or do you perhaps like it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.